Hello! Are you aware that you are watching this video from a device that has either a microcontroller or a system on a chip inside? Just imagine, almost every electronic device around us has them. Indeed, microcontrollers and systems on a chip, commonly called MCU and SOC, surround us and make our lives easier. Did you know this chip is a small computer on its own? It has a CPU and a number of peripheral modules. However, unlike a personal computer, these devices usually have less memory and smaller CPU frequency. Instead, they have peripheral modules that are missing in regular personal computers – ADC, CAN bus, GPIO, and others. They are invaluable for engineers, developers, scientists, and DIY makers. Presence of said hardware makes it possible to create devices that are commonly used in our daily life, in industrial production, and even in scientific experiments. MCU and SOC itself usually lack user-friendly interfaces as screen or keyboard. The only way to get full access to chip's peripherals is to communicate with them through a program written to the chip's internal memory. Such programs are called firmware. Therefore, interacting with chip's peripherals from a personal computer can occur only via the firmware. To do an operation with hardware, a desktop program sends a message to chip using a specific communication protocol. The firmware in the chip receives the message, parses it, parses the command, performs action on peripherals, and returns a response. Usually, this action is a function call of peripheral driver from the software development kit, called SDK, provided by semiconductor chip vendors or third parties. This is a standard approach for interaction between computer and external chip. Unfortunately, it is a time-consuming and labor-intensive process that requires firmware development and writing a load of boilerplate code to parse and transport the messages, and also update the firmware. In addition, the firmware works asynchronously relative to the desktop program. Such a pair of applications is difficult to develop, debug, test, and maintain. But fortunately, there is another approach. What if a desktop application could remotely perform the operations with chip's peripherals as if they were a part of our computer? This would be very interesting. We could avoid firmware development and writing boilerplate code. This leads to an overall reduction in both man hours and code base. Now there is only a monolithic desktop application which is easy to develop, debug, test, and support. It is not a dream anymore. It has already become possible thanks to the RemQ project. The RemQ library provides the same API as the peripheral drivers of the SDK. So a program running on a personal computer can just call the API endpoint and RemQ lib will call the driver function with the parameters you specify on the remote chip, and return the results of the function. This removes the difference between interacting with peripheral modules directly from firmware code or desktop application. An application program that uses the RemQ library gets the same kind of access to all the chip's peripherals as firmware inside the chip would have. You can launch and run examples from the SDK on your computer. On top of that, you can get firmware code that uses the vendor drivers and run it on your computer. Also, it's possible to use SDK's header files there. Thanks to that, you don't need to learn new tools. You can just use the SDK's documentation. Actually, it works. Check out our video tutorials and examples on GitHub. So, now that you have gained access to all the chip's peripherals, what does it let you do? More access means more opportunities. Now you can cheaply and easily expand your computer's hardware through microcontroller-based boards without any special devices, like USB ADC, USB CAN, and others. If you ever wish to conduct a quick experiment with any chip peripheral module or explore it, 
then RemQlib is the right tool for that. It can be easily integrated in Jupyter Notebook with a C++ interpreter. This IDE is free and it lets you run and execute C or C++ code on the go. This way you can call the functions of the driver directly and control chip in real time. It saves a lot of time that is usually spent on development of experimental firmwares, and it helps to learn how to use new peripheral blocks quicker. And furthermore, the application code written in the C programming language using RemQlib is backwards portable, meaning it can be transferred from a desktop program to the MCU program and vice versa. The code will work just as fine on a microcontroller as it works on a personal computer. That's why code written on desktop with RemQlib can be used to develop a standalone firmware. It is also possible to use the RemQlib with high-level languages like Python, Java, c -sharp, and others. To make working with them less troublesome, we provide language wrappers. With these wrappers, it becomes easy to work with hardware as it is using C or C++. Have a look at our examples. The library is simple and convenient to use. Interpreted languages like Python provide the ability to write scripts, which make it even easier to test hardware. The test scripts are useful in testing both simple board elements and complex chips with digital interfaces. Analog and digital signal generation, capture, and analysis is very easy with test scripts. Another possible use case of test scripts is to check external communication interfaces of microcontroller boards. The test scripts are a combination of test firmware and test desktop applications. On top of that, scripts are easier to develop, debug and maintain than compile programs, and they are easier to integrate into hardware continuous integration. The RemQ library is a cross-platform library, and it works on all of the most common desktop operating systems. It can also be ported to embedded systems. Very often, embedded platforms have a limited number of peripherals, which is commonly expanded using external MCU or SOC. But the RemQ library makes it possible to easily expand the limited number of peripherals of an embedded computer without having to develop firmware, kernel drivers, and other additional software. Our website has a video tutorial on using the RemQlib on the Raspberry Pi board, with some examples. You just need a Pi board, an STM32F103 microcontroller, and some wires. With the RemQlib, the Raspberry Pi will get access to all peripherals of the microcontroller. The RimQ library can be customized for almost any microcontroller including 8-bit, 16-bit, 32-bit, and 64-bit system on a chip. Thank you for your attention. If you need RimQlib for some specific MCU or SOC, just leave a message on our website or write an email.